Good morning, Old Blue. And good morning to you. See what I did there? We're rhyming first thing in the morning. It's gonna be a good day. We're getting going. We gotta deliver that load we picked up in Valcourt, Quebec. Remember, we're still on that same trip. We left from here, we went to Montreal. From Montreal, we went to Valcourt. From Valcourt, we went back here on our way to Alberta. Uh, my delivery appointment gave me enough time to stop at home because it's the weekend. Otherwise, I would have gotten there on like Saturday and they're not open till Monday. So I stopped at home to get my reset here at home, get my logs reset for the next week. Now we have to leave, continue on this trip towards Alberta. Our first drop is in Drayton Valley, Alberta tomorrow, as early as we can get there. Let's get going. I got my Timmy's already. So the way I get myself to rush in the mornings, like to get going, is I go and buy my Tim's before I get to my shop, like on my way to my shop, and then I put it in my cup holder. And the goal is to have everything loaded in my truck, have the truck ready to go before my coffee gets cold. So I have all my stuff in here for the week. I'm all ready to go, ready to start up Old Blue, let her warm up a bit. Come on, Blue. Come on, come on. up I've got the air going to the trailer here I'm listening for air leaks you get in here and take a look at our brakes they don't have dust coverage on them so it's easy to see them you want to make sure that your brake pads aren't cracked and that they are present Because without brake pads, the brakes don't work as well. So, gotta make sure those are there. Brake lights, signal lights working, marker lights, license plate light is working. My tarps are still here. They're waiting for me, I didn't forget about you guys. Did you miss me? Did you miss me? Premium autumn air with a, a splash of winter air just in case we might hit some snow. We are going up towards Edmonton. They've already had snow this year and it is that time of year. We usually have, well, usually we often have snow before Halloween. So the kids are all dressed up in their Halloween costumes over their snowsuits. We're used to that. Okay, and I heard no air leaks while I was back there. gonna check a few more things and we'll be on our way so from this exact spot where we are now there's 1521 kilometers to our first drop for my American friends 1521 kilometers in miles 1521 kilometers is 945.106 miles 945 miles. Not gonna get the whole way tonight. I can do, in Canada, I can do seven, 750 miles. In the US, I can usually do about 600, maybe 650, depending on traffic and stuff. Not 600, but you can get further in Canada because we have uh, different hours of service. For those of you new, uh, I can drive 13 hours in one 24 hour period, in one day. It's much like the US, you, uh, from midnight to midnight, 
on your home terminal time. You can drive 13 hours, you can be on duty for 14. So when you start your day, you can drive 13. You don't have to stop for a half hour break and log that like you do in the States, though you should because if you get pulled into a scale for an inspection and they look at your day and it doesn't show any stops or load checks, they're gonna question you and they're gonna really drill your, uh, your equipment or drill your equipment. You know what I mean, really drill you on your equipment. It, you should show a break on there. You, you need to uh, show that shows responsibility because if you're not stopping they're gonna be like hmm you're not checking your equipment you're not checking your load how do you know it's still secured how do you know according to your logbook you have no idea you've been driving this whole time 10 hours straight right so you should stop and check your load and log that always log as load check when you stop just so there's a record of it hey I got out of my truck and I checked my straps I checked my load they just want to see that you did that but you don't have to like in the US. In the US, you can only drive eight hours and you need a half hour break. And in Europe, it's even worse. You can only drive like four hours at 80 kilometers an hour. How do you guys get anywhere in Europe? 80 kilometers an hour, just putting down the highway every four hours, you gotta stop. Those those regulations in Europe are, they are non-profitable in my opinion. I, I've looked into them, I was like, how on earth would these companies make money dealing with all these, like that's the EU for you though, right? The EU is like regulation city. They want regulations for this and regulations for that. Regulations for me and regulations for you and then regulations to regulate the regulations and then a main regulator to regulate the regulations that are regulating the other regulations. And then on top of that, you get it. I've never been to Europe, so <laughs> take it with a grain of salt what I say. I don't, I don't know what it's like driving there, but I, I'm just looking at all the regulations. I'm like, dang, like calm down, like trust people a little bit, right? or have trained them better, I don't know. They need regulations for everything. And like, I, I was looking into this too, while we're on the topic, building a home in the EU, like the amount, they want to regulate like the amount of space you have between your toilet and your sink in your bathroom. Like they, they want to be in control of that. Like obviously you're going to make a bathroom so that there's room to like close the door and room for you to use the sink and use the bathroom, right? That's common sense. You don't need a regulation for common sense because it's common sense. I know they're the government there, like they want to be in control of every, they want to micromanage every part of the process of your life. It's like, wow, no wonder we all came over here. We built a new Europe, we made it better. We did, we started over, we're like, no, this is too much. We're starting over, <laughs> we're building a new one. <laughs> and in fact of that, you know, we're gonna build two new, three new ones. We're gonna build the US, the Can <laughs> US Canada, Australia, and New Zealand too, four of them. We're gonna, we're gonna do it better. Though, <laughs> I'm just babbling now, I'm just babbling. Anyways, you Europeans in my comment section, you guys are great. Correct me if I'm wrong on any of that in my comment section. Let me know if I'm right. I don't wanna know, I don't live there. I've never been to Europe, I'm not European. Despite what keyboard warriors on the internet will say about me, I'm not European, I've never been there. I'm Canadian. That's. Never been here. I don't even have any family in Europe. And we're off. We're on the south perimeter of Winnipeg, facing westbound. My lane is ending. Look at this though. It looks like Winnipeg has got a new overpass. How many years have I been saying we need like dozens of these? We have one. We've got one now. This is St. Mary's Avenue or St. Mary's Road. And look at this. We're about to go under, I'm very excited. You know, I've been talking about it in my videos. Like Winnipeg is like the place to go if you want traffic lights where there should be overpasses. They used to have traffic lights at this intersection of St. Mary's. They still have ones at St. Anne's, which is behind us now. They need an overpass there too. But hey, we got one. You can jump up and down and celebrate now. One overpass. Way to go, Winnipeg. Way to go. You're starting to get it. You're starting to get it. You see, now no one has to stop. We can all keep driving. It's, it's a revolutionary thought. All they got to do is finish up the ditches here by the looks of it. But there's already cars driving over the bridge up there. I'm going to have to test out that bridge myself next time I come to the city. Very exciting.
a lot of work though. Look at all this. Uh, looks like they're doing a good job though. I mean, the road is nice. Let's, let's make our judgment after about six months. Let's see how the road's doing after winter. If they did it right, it'll still be nice and smooth. But if they pick the cheapest bid, which they always do, but maybe not this time. And then you know you're gonna have potholes in here by May next year. But maybe they did it right. Let's give them the benefit of the doubt. It looks beautiful. We'll make our judgment late spring 2025. Not too shabby. Come on, bud, get in here. Get in here, man. Don't be scared. The water's fine. Well, don't slow down. Why do you why do people do that? Why do you do that? You match the speed of traffic. We're on the west side of Portage La Prairie. We get some fuel. 400 meters at the roundabout. Take the first exit onto Saskatchewan Avenue West, Manitoba 1A. So the cheapest fuel on my route is here in Portage. I could fuel in Brandon for the same price at the Petro Pass there. But uh, I'm at an eighth of tank right now. I don't really want to run it down any lower than that. I could probably make it to Brandon, but... Oh, well, the last time we fueled up was in Capas Casing, Ontario, and we've been That's waiting... roundabout onto Saskatchewan Avenue West, then turn left onto Road 39 West. We've been waiting until now to fuel up in Manitoba, because the fuel prices in Manitoba are so much cheaper than anywhere else right now. for nine kilometers. service road, I'm going to take the main road. Why would I take that way? Yeah. See? Isn't that much easier? I wanted me to go and take that service road over there on the left. Why? I just have to get back on this road. Google, you don't know what you're talking about. It's a pretty tight little card lock, so hopefully there's no one else there. Just sneak right in and peel up and sneak right out. It's just up here to the right. Good, no one else is there. Oh, but I don't know if I can make that corner. Oh, okay. So I gotta turn right. Actually, you know what? At the light, turn right onto Elm Street, then your destination will be on the left. So you know what? I'm gonna go around the back of the building. There's a driveway behind the building. I think that's the way we're supposed to enter. If I enter from this way, my trailers are going to be hanging out almost onto the road or onto the street. By the looks of it, I've only fueled up here once before. I didn't even know this place was here until the last time. So we're going to go past this street. Google's going to get all mad. I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to turn in here. In 300 meters, turn left onto 19th No, no, no. Right here. Okay, I think this is how it's supposed to go in. I'm not sure, but this is the way I'm picking to go in. My fuel, my choice. Looks like they got one spot here. If you want to spend the night here, you can fit one truck up against that curb there. Good to know, good to know. Oh yeah, see this is way better this way. This is the way my trailer's not hanging out into the street on the other side if I was facing like towards me. Let's see right away what I mean. Here we go. It's a little bit of a tight lot, but hey, if they got cheap juice. I'll make it fit. I'll make it work. I'll pull through straight and out a bit more. And then back up. There we go. Wonderful. There, see? I'll make it work. Give me my cheap juice. 5.37 miles per gallon. From Capus Casing to here. All of those hills in Ontario, I guess. I don't know. Wow. 675 liters or uh what was it 178 gallons 
not the best, but you know, this load is really light, but it's like a parachute behind me because that third level of crates is above my truck. So the wind goes over my truck and just wham, hits right into that top level and just slows me down. It's like an anchor behind me. Ah, it is what it is. I'm not putting a little swoosh on my truck or my that little wind deflector on the top of my truck. I'm not putting one of those on. Never say never, Trucker Josh. Well, I don't want to put one on. Let's say that. All right. Let's continue. Let's hope for better winds pushing us west. Burger King right across the street making me hungry. Not today, Temptation. Not today. I've got some uh, meatloaf along that Britt made this weekend. Took some leftovers along with me. I'm looking forward to eating that later. Really looking forward to it, actually. Off we go. Alberta Bound. There's a song about that. You look it up. It's called Alberta Bound. Crossing border. Entering Saskatchewan. Changing time zone. We're chasing that setting sun. And about to exit off here at exit 217. East side of Regina. Flying J, I'm gonna swing in here, stretch my legs a bit, and uh, check my load. Also grab a coffee. It's not even 4.30 yet. Look at that sun, it's almost gone. They have a Tim Hortons across the street here, but they got no truck parking over there. I don't wanna walk all the way over there Maybe on another day, but not today. I don't feel like going for that long of a walk. I'm trying to get to Alberta as quickly as possible. Yeah, got my coffee. Got my poppy. It's that season again. Make sure you guys get yours and wear it. Time to head down the road. Got a long way to go yet. I have seven hours available to me to drive today yet. I'd like to use all of them. See how I feel. I'm surprised how quickly that sun Changes position on the horizon. Oh, man. But hey, we got like less than two months and we're past the winter solstice. The days get longer again. maybe a little bit further. We'll see where destiny brings us. In 800 meters, take the entrance to the ride right on Highway 16 West Highway 11 North Highway 12 North Trans Canada Highway. Not too sure where we'll stop. Get as far as we can though. We got us little to do tomorrow as possible so then I can get unloaded and get up to my second delivery maybe by the end of day take the entrance to the ride on highway 16 west highway 11 north highway 12 north trans Canada highway easy there little red car just about tried to jump out in front of me I saw you yeah, I'm hoping to be able to get to my second delivery tomorrow afternoon we'll see I'm expecting to get there the following day 
it's getting late and it's getting windy. I have another hour and a half left to me on my clock. I'm at the scale just before the Alberta border here in Saskatchewan. This turning in. I'm driving directly into this wind and it's just sucking out my fuel economy. So I decided I'm going to stay here. I don't usually like staying at scales, but whatever. It is what it is. Turn right. Yeah, I am. I'm going to turn right. We're going to sleep here and hopefully the wind... 300 meters. Turn right on. trans Karen, I'm talking. Highway 16. Excuse me, I'm talking. I'm talking. Okay. I heard that before. Anyway, what was I saying? Yeah, hopefully in the morning there won't be any wind or less, there will be less wind anyways, because uh, I'm burning too much fuel pulling this parachute behind me in this, so we'll hope for better days tomorrow. We're right on the end here. light. right over there. Shh. Be very, very quiet. A couple more guys parked over here. The wind is coming right from that direction pretty much. So I was going that way and uh, the load behind me was just acting like a giant parachute. So rather than burn all my money away into fuel, I figured I'd park here and uh, we'll get going in about eight hours. chilly out here though. Man, feels like winter time. I'm definitely glad I got that bunk heater working. Uh, we worked on that last year. Remember that? I was having trouble with the glow plug in it and I had to rebuild the whole thing. I didn't know if I could do it or not and then I ended up doing it and I'm super proud of myself because I'm not a mechanic and I'm not usually good at these kind of things but uh, I got it and it's still working now so I'm really happy about that. We got the engine heater so uh, I'm going to be shutting this truck off here right away. It's climbing back there into my bed. Going to sleep. I can get moving from here in just over eight hours. So about eight hours in the sleeper. Then I got to do my pre-trip and then I can get going. That'll get us rolling at about 7 a.m. local time here. I'm in mountain time zone now. Seven, so eight, nine, 10, 11. I should be arriving at my customer. 11, give myself time to stop for a bathroom break. Probably oh, right around the lunch hour. Oh, that's when I told him I was going to be there. I told him I was going to be there midday on Monday. So I'll be right on time. It's a like, first come, first serve whenever I get there type of deal. But yeah, I'll be there right at uh, noon. Hopefully I get unloaded quick and we can run up to my next, uh, my next delivery, which is in Yellowhead County. Uh, I think it's an hour and a half from there. I might get the trailer empty tomorrow yet, which would be fantastic. Fantastic. Hopefully we can do that. But anyways, tune in tomorrow to find out. Hit that subscribe button down below and hit the bell so you don't miss it when it goes live. It should be there at 4 p.m. Central Time. Thanks for joining today, everybody. We'll talk to you later.